Schluss, glaube ich. Und Eiscreme. I think Maris is ice cream. It's a big chip in here. I don't know how much it is. It's small. You can say happy Marissa. Hey folks, how's everybody doing? Hope y'all are having a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day here, another hot one though. It's another hot one. I ain't gonna lie, a little bit of breeze just like yesterday. But all y'all planning on coming on over, you got your tickets booked on the way. Just understand that it's hot. And you know what, shout out to my buddy man. You know how I always talk about make sure you bring a floppy hat or something, you know, because it's, you know, obviously a lot of sunshine. As we get older, we have less and less hair on the top of our heads. So it's only smart to wear some type of boonie hat, floppy hat, straw cowboy hat, something to keep the, the sun off of your hair follicles on your head and off your ears or they'll get burnt. Now, and so the other night he said, hey, man, he said I was... What did he say he was doing? He was shopping or something, looked over, and there was like a damn boonie hat on clearance for a dollar, and he picked it up. So, uh, I'm not joking when I say it's hot. But I'm going to tell you who wins the hat award of the week. My friend from Tequila Reef wearing that Big Mac hat. You know, I really didn't pay attention to it. Of course, we're drinking, whatever. But sitting there watching the video, I'm like, man, that's the funniest hat I've ever seen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the, the previous video uh, from Monday night. Well, that's when we were there at Tequila Reef Monday night. But my buddy was wearing that hat. It's like, it, it, you just have to go look at it. The Big Mac hat. That is an awesome hat. Whoever come up with that design and that concept, uh, that's funny. you walking around like you got a Big Mac on your head. Fucking great advertising, though. You know, if I were, if I were McDonald's, I mass produce like 10 million of those things and just give them away free. Buy a Big Mac, get one of the Big Mac hats for free. Maybe that's what they did. Maybe that's where you got it, man. Uh, maybe I missed that giveaway. But too funny. Folks got the old lady. She's been hounding me about cooking early. And it usually works out better for us if I cook early. I cook early, take the kids for a walk, you know, get them in, get them a shower, a little TV, and then they're out for the night. So I'm going to wait for a little bit of the sun to go down, and then I'm firing up spaghetti. Just a nice spaghetti night, something simple. But she wants to walk over to Marissa's place, our buddy Joe's place, and buy some ice cream. Now... I don't know why I watched this video today. I guess because I knew what the dude was talking about from when I lived in America, right? Dude did a video, a little mini documentary about why the ice cream machine at McDonald's is always broken. And apparently, I guess there's been a lot of chatter on the internet about it. And folks, I'm left out. I had no idea. But 
when I read that title, I said, I know what he's talking about. You know, even living in America, the damn ice cream machine's always broken. Over here, not so much. But in the U.S., the ice cream machine at McDonald's is frequently broken. And I was like, yeah, why is that? And I watched this big long video and his theory, and there's data to back it up that basically they make that machine so complicated that it requires a technician to come out and the company that sells it to them makes 25% of their revenue fixing the damn machine. But they're the same company that sells the machines to like Wendy's and all these other places and their ice cream machine is never down. It's only in McDonald's because of the type of machine they have to buy and it's just it, it don't even tell you what's wrong it just shows these crazy error codes and you're supposed to call a technician because it's between 500 and a thousand dollars for the service call to come fix the damn ice cream machine and, you know that's a big long talk to say she wanted to go over and get some ice cream from our our friend marissa and she has an ice cream machine and i'm gonna ask her hey does your machine ever break down i don't think so but I don't think hers has any digital, you know, uh, technology up there. I might be wrong. I'm going to find out tonight. But the ones at McDonald's have all these damn buttons and a digital readout. And that's why the shit's always messed up. It's, it's by design. So the, the franchise owner has to call the, uh, the manufacturer who sends out a service tech. Who makes about 25% of their revenue off of that stuff. So now it all makes sense why McDonald's machines are always down. It's by design. Maybe. I'm sensing a little bit of jealousy going on here. I'm sensing a little bit of jealousy here, folks. Going on with the wife number two here. First, she got a little. She got a little jealous of the bulldog. Now you're a little bit jealous of wife number eight. I can't promote you to wife number one right now, baby. It's the jealousy is Evan, an issue. Evan, 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 I'm still the number one. Evan, you call me number two, but in your head, in your in your mind, in your whole body, I'm the number one. The the kids. I'm the number one. What you eating, sweetie? Manda. Manda. You eating a mango? Is no, it, it, manda. Manda. It's a mango. Manda. Manda. Okay. Maganda. Hey, <laughs> that's a mango. Okay, is it delicious? Yes. <laughs> I look young. Kuli na kaya bare kada. You want to translate that? What, what was that, honey? What did you say? I said I'm not old. All right, you want to tell everybody. Now, this is a good thing. It's not a joke. It's what you've been doing. Tell everybody what you've been putting on your face. And, folks, her skin <laughs> is getting, like, so radiant. Like, it's glowing. I mean, really, I could tell the difference. I didn't know she was doing it for a while, and I'm like, man, wow, your skin is looking so nice. And then I caught her with a tomato. So tell, tell them what you're doing, baby. I cut the tomato half. I put in the freezer all night. In the morning, I put in my face. You scrub your face with the frozen tomato. Yes. That's good. I, I was doing lemon treatments. I stopped the lemon treatments, but... I was doing like whole body lemon treatments. Mommy. I gotta get back to that. I like the lemon, Mommy. but the tomato is doing real good for you. Lemon is so expensive. But hey, he's yeah. getting the rabbit food. Hurry up. He thinks that's a chip. No, he, 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 that's a rabbit thing. He threw the rabbit. This boy, this boy on a daily basis throws all of his. Anything he can get his hands on, he throws over in the rabbit pen over there. So every day I gotta get over there. Because, because yes, sweetie. He that the rabbit that. Okay, sweetie. What happened? Yeah, you got a scratch. No. So every day I have to get in the rabbit pen, clean out the plastic balls, the shoes. No, I don't eat that. Everything that he throws over there. Every day. No matter what you do, it's just a game he plays, he loves to do it. 
He throws papers, uh, cups. Usually my Yeti cups end up over there in the rabbit pen every day. She loves this chair that Eric and Mercy bought her. And it's it's a little, or they bought it for Forrest G. It's a little folding, you know, a little folding camping chair. And she loves it, but she wants her own because she knows it belongs to Forrest G. So we got to get her one for her birthday, get her a pink one. Oh. Honey, get her boys in the ant mound over there. That's ants not biting ants. No, them are biting ants. No, no, it's the type of ants that don't bite, according to Fatima. Yeah. Okay, go over there and put three or four in your mouth and tell me if they bite you. <laughs> That's a black one. That's bite. They don't bite? The red one is... They don't bite me. The non-biting ant. Oh, <laughs> special breed of non-biting ant from the Philippines. Yeah, I What? If that's Alice coming in your house, yeah. you, have, uh, you, have, uh, you have a man coming. Okay, so if these little tiny black ants come to your house, that means you have a lot of money coming. With, with Filipino <laughs> uh, superstition number 8,243. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? Now look. Hi, Every culture, folks. Don't think I'm just making fun of wife number two. I I'm just happen to be here and I happen to learn new. That's Ate Faye said it. Oh, because Ate Faye said it, then yeah. it has to be true. Yeah. Yeah. If if an if an Ate here, which is an older female, tells Ate Ate a younger Ate female it. something, it's it's yeah. golden. They don't question it. Me, the foreigner, I can tell her. Anything that's backed up by science or 50 years of living on this earth that I know, they don't believe me. But if Ate so-and-so tells her, or Auntie, or her Tita tells her something, they, be they believe everything. They really do. They believe everything that the elders told them, especially, especially Ate Maimai. If Ate Maimai says it, oh my God, oh, Ate Maimai said it. So, I lose track of which stories I tell. But over in Thailand, what I learned was that bees are very good luck. Now, the way I found this out was not through a book or somebody telling me. It was through experience. What happened was my Thai wife's aunt at the time, they had a three-story townhouse. So like down below it was a shop house and then you had the second and the third floor and I think you actually get you actually get to the roof but you know a lot of shop houses in Thailand are three stories uh, and people run their business on the bottom floor use the second third floor to live in the roof usually got the washing you know they do the washing up there wash machine and the clothes anyhow so we go we go over there and they're like you know, Marco, let me show you this, you know, go up to second floor, the third floor, and I look up, and there is this biggest beehive that I have ever seen in my entire life. And where it's at, it's on the ceiling of the third floor. I mean, it is huge. There's honey oozing everywhere, a million bees. It's just huge. And so I'm the foreign guy. The first thing I'm thinking is, how are we going to get that down? You know, I'm a redneck, so I know how to get rid of hornet's nests and, and uh, uh, wasp nests and all that. But there's a million bees up there. And looking back, I didn't really notice, but they didn't. They weren't using the third floor. They were just using the second floor. They all stayed on the second floor. So I'm like, God, how are we going to get that down? They're like, oh, no, 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 Marco. Marco, that's good luck. That's choke D. I'm like, yeah, but... I mean, you're going to sleep on the second floor. You're going to have a million bees come down there and sting you in the middle of the night. Oh, no problem, no problem. It only happens every now and then. I'm like, what? So it's already happening. So I'm talking to my wife. She's like, no, that's good luck. The bees come to your home. It's good luck. 
I said, yeah, but look, they got they got kids. Those bees are going to come down there and sting the hell out of them in the middle of the night. I said, they need to get rid of them bees. <laughs> and uh, obviously, we're not on the same sheet of music, right? Oh, no, 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 never. So what happened, I kept telling her, I said, look, this superstition, I'm okay with superstitions and, unless it endangers people, you know, especially the kids. I said, they really need to get rid of that shit. And she said, oh, no, no, they're charging money. They're charging money for people to come up there and look at the bees. You can't make this shit up, right? They were charging them, I don't know what it was, 100 baht, 200 baht, somewhere in there. To come up there, they would the, the person would look at the bees, and they would pick their lottery numbers. You know, it's funny because gambling is technically... Gambling is technically illegal in Thailand, and it's frowned upon, but everybody in Thailand gambles. It's one of those uh, issues of hypocrisy, let's just say that, right? So, I was like, amazing. They're making money off of these bees, and every now and then, every other night, somebody will get stung in their sleep. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, I'm trying to convince my wife that this is just a superstition. And you know what happened? One of those people. You can't make this shit up, I'm telling you. One of those people who paid to come over there and look at the bees hit the damn lottery. Now, they didn't win no million or two million, but they won a couple thousand, you know, 5,000 U.S. That's big money. So they did hit big money. Not, you know, not like Bill Gates' money, but they hit, they hit big money. And they won the freaking lottery after staring at those bees and their lottery number just popped in their head. After that yeah, happened, just look in the bees, then after that happened, do you think I could convince anybody there that that was just a superstition? No. It was the gospel. It was concrete. It was scientific fact. The amount of people that came over there, I mean, triple. Once the word got around that, you know, so-and-so came over here, looked at them lucky bees and won the lottery. How'd you do it? Oh, I, I was staring at the bees and the number just popped into my head. And they won. So I stopped trying to argue with them, you know. And then eventually, uh, I don't know, a couple months later, whenever, I didn't, I didn't go over there for a while and then, Next time I went over there, I was like, hey, how's the bee business? And they're like, ah, all the, the bees left for some reason. They were gone. So <laughs> so their little price of admission to climb up to the third floor, up to the third deck and look at the bees, that was over. You know, I don't, I don't know what happened to the bees. Who knows? They moved on or died. I don't know. They moved? Now, how would you know? You Were, were you there 10 years ago? Okay, so my, my Filipino wife is a bee expert. She's explaining that 100% what happened to them is that they moved. Yeah, they moved because the egg is already hatching. Okay, baby, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, input on my bee story here. But look, folks, again, I'm, I'm not making fun of things, all right? I mean, I'm... I'm, I'm Certain things are comical, but maybe you can say I'm making fun of it, but I'm not casting stones. I guess that's what I'm saying, because I come from the country. I come from the country, backwoods of Mississippi. There's just as many superstitions. And, you know, what we say there in the country is that, you know, this is what the old folks say. The old folks say this. And if the old folks say that, then it's science. We just have different suspicions. Baby, you know, every time you do clapping that, you're shaking my tripod. Yeah, if you could just remove your elbow. Five years and she still don't understand a video camera, a tripod, and stuff. Baby, please. The tripod, the tripod, you have to look for that. Okay, so anyhow. You know, uh, growing up, we had so many, so many superstitions, and it's about what the old folks say. So I'm not casting stones by no means. It's just that I'm living here. And I would say for every superstition we had in the backwoods of Mississippi, they have a thousand here. That's just why it's 
every day you live here in the Philippines, you learn some new superstition about something that you, hell, I mean, I think a dude could live here 20 years and not hear them all. Yeah, it's hot in the Philippines. That perplexes me too. When she claim, claim, when she complains about it being hot, I'm like, baby, this is the only place you've ever lived your entire life. It's not like you just came in from Switzerland, <laughs> you know. And, Damn, it's hot here. No, it's where you lived your whole life, honey. And every day she complains it's hot. It's hot in the Philippines. And see, now what she don't realize is that fan blowing into my shotgun mic is just going to go... Honey, here's a news flash for you. I make YouTube videos for uh, this thing called YouTube. This is a camera. That's a microphone. I know you're hot, but this is the Philippines. Anyhow, beautiful baby. Don't need to hide that tummy. I love chubby and I love stretch marks, baby. I'm not chubby. I'm sick sick. I don't care what they say. I'm sick sick, okay? I'm sick sick. Oi. Got a big problem going on here. This could be the end of my. Oh, you still use the, you still use that? This could be the end of my beloved oh, spatula. I'm not burning it. I ain't never burned anything in my life. Okay. When I said you're going to burn. Okay, just go ahead and please leave the kitchen. Just vacate the kitchen area, please. Goodbye. Come on. No. Out of here. At least. <laughs> Folks, uh, I feel like deja vu. I've said this before, but my buddy, um, Warner, such a cool dude, you know. I guess he sees me out here cooking every night, and, you know, every now and then he just comes out and brings me a cold German beer from Angel's Bakery. Thank you very much, my friend. My my goodness. <laughs> I'm just sitting here cooking. I ran out of uh, Imperador. I've been drinking San Big Light all day. Thank you very much, man. That's exactly what I needed. My goodness.